You're watching Utah's number one news channel. This is 2 News at 4. This is a developing story on 2 News. Ogden police are investigating a homicide. Thanks so much for joining us here for Utah's number one news at four. I'm Heidi Hatch and I'm Chris Miller. Police say a woman found a man's body late last night inside a storage unit. Amy and A on this story for us. She's live at the Ogden police station and Amy, what's the latest? Hey, Chris. Amy and A live in Ogden. Thanks, Amy. In other news this afternoon, a woman held against her will inside of a West Jordan home freed by police. Early this morning, the woman found a phone and called police for help. Officers arrived at the house near 22nd West and 71st South. They say the suspect, 49 year old Patrick Yazzie, refused to cooperate. Police used a taser and pepper spray on Yazzie before they arrested him. Now he's facing a long list of potential charges. Unlawful detention, intoxication, domestic. Uh domestic assault, obstruction of justice, resisting arrest, um, and others are probably pending. Police say both the suspect and the victim were drunk at the time and that the pair have known each other for a while. Officers took the woman to the hospital where doctors treated her for minor injuries. A Salt Lake father in jail after firing a shotgun near his four-year-old son. Police are saying that 28-year-old Bryson Lent shot the gun from his porch near 2nd South and 12th East. It was following an argument with a neighbor. Officers say that Lance fired off four shots into the air. Nobody heard in all this. Police arrived and arrested Lance on charges of reckless endangerment of a child, child endangerment, and possession of a firearm while intoxicated. Officers then took the four-year-old boy to the Christmas box shelter for kids. Now open a new playground in West Jordan. It is named after murder victim Sierra Newbold. She was killed in 2012 when she was just six years old. The Sierra Newbold Playground at Ronwood Park includes 13,000 square feet of play space. It includes an area for handicapped children to play along with slides and swings. Beautiful. Well, plenty of people took advantage of Utah State Parks this Memorial Day weekend. 113,000 people visited the parks, according to statistics, and that's a 15% increase over last year's number. State Parks Director Fred Hayes says improvements in higher water levels at reservoirs may be responsible for that surge. Hayes says most campgrounds were full last week and that he expects to see that trend continue throughout the summer. Well, the ultimate roller coaster is being built right here in Utah. Dan Rasco joining us with more on this high tech ride. Ultimate sounds big and scary, Dan. Yeah, it really is big and scary. I got a chance to be able to jump on this, but we're talking about a roller coaster being designed right here in Utah by SNS Worldwide. Now, the ride features a free spin ability that's supposed to give thrill seekers a different ride each time that they go. Our fourth dimension is one of the most, called, I think, called the most extreme coaster in the world. Yeah, pretty extreme. Coming up on 2 News at 5 o'clock, I'll take you inside the story there of this roller coaster that they're making, how it's being made, and kind of why it's supposed to be so scary. I also get on the ride there. You'll hear me scream a little bit. <laughs> Sweet. So join us at 5. That's right for that story. We don't want to oh. see you puke, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> that old equilibrium gets a little off in all of us when we get a little older. All right. Yeah, I think proud. I was too scared to puke. And oh, then good. It, it took a little while. About an hour later, that's when I lost it. So. Glad right you on. survived. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. All right. Provo makes it to the Elite Eight, but we're not talking basketball here. Yeah, instead, Provo is in the running for Outside Magazine's Best Town Prize. Daniel Woodruff has this story. The mayor and several city leaders are reporting in Provo. Daniel Woodruff, 2 News. Some stiff competition there. Mm -hmm. Well, in national news, Jeopardy champ Julia Collins has now crossed the $400,000 mark. Oh, yeah. Last night, Collins won her 19th game. She brought her cash prize total up to $410,000. With 19 wins, she's tied for the second most non-tournament wins ever. She says her strategy is quite simple. Just focus on what you do know. There are always questions I don't know the answer to uh, in every game, and I try not to let it get me down. All right, so she comes through tonight. Collins will have won 20 games, making her win streak the second longest in Jeopardy history. She's still got to catch up to someone named Ken Jennings. Remember him? Yeah, I remember him. He remains him. Jeopardy's ultimate champion, and he won 74 straight games for a total of $2.5 million. That's going to be tough to catch in. And I like that she has $400,000 now. She can go to shopping spree because I think in 90% of her shows, she wears the exact same long sleeve t-shirt just in a different <laughs> color. So she can mix it up now. Yeah, maybe it's her lucky shirt. That's right. I'm not <laughs> listening to the questions. I'm like, hmm, I like your necklace. <laughs> hey, just ahead here on 2 News at 4 o'clock. 
teenage girls. <laughs> a new drug giving breast cancer patients a chance at motherhood. Why doctors are now putting women into temporary menopause to help them have kids post-chemo. And we have a few scattered showers and thunderstorms popping up in eastern Utah, but it's gorgeous here across the west. But there's a cold front headed our way for the weekend. I'll let you know what it means for the outdoor plans you have coming up in the Fresh Air Forecast next. Welcome back. A new breakthrough may help preserve the ovaries of young breast cancer patients. Alexis Christophorus has more on this story. Stephanie Mozio, Alexis Christophorus, CBS 2 News. Doctors also found the women who received the hormone blocking drug had better overall survival rates, but researchers say more study really is needed to confirm those same findings. Naturally. Very All right, cool. so it's another beautiful day, and I Gorgeous. don't see any clouds anywhere, Lindsay. Well, there's a few out there. A few little ones That's here in tiny. western I'm sure Utah. There's there, some. I just there, don't see any. There are some bigger <laughs> ones over in eastern Utah, though, that are producing some showers and thunderstorms, and we'll show you those in just a minute. For partly cloudy skies as our next weak little system crosses the state, but both the storm that's coming in uh, late tomorrow and the storm midweek looking pretty darn dry for most locations, guys. Okay, I think we can deal with those temps. Looks cozy. Yeah, yeah. should be a really nice week. Remember cool. that those winds will be gusty throughout the day tomorrow, though. All right, okay, ponytail day for sure. <laughs> yes, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Just ahead here on 2 News at 4 o'clock, a fall on the field ends in celebration. Where this crazy kick went down, whether or not it actually counted. <laughs> and in the kitchen, I'm going to show you how to do a delicious chicken Florentine when I come back. Welcome to the kitchen where we are Utah's biggest goofballs. Ah. I love it. Mr. Utah, welcome to the kitchen. Brian told me I was going to be pounding some chicken today, so we, yes. we put on a sash and Brian <laughs> made me Mr. Utah. Keeping it classy here on Tuesday. We are keeping So if you will just flatten That's those just a little bit more for me, and then we're going to dredge them in the flour, and then they're going to go right into Am the I going to pound these or roll them? You can either way. way. I've, I've done most of it for you because you broke my peeler yesterday, so you know I'm kind of <laughs> easing you into I don't I'm want you to break, break my roll. rolling pin. Yeah. So just a little bit, make sure they're all even, okay. and we'll dredge them in there. Now, I'm also going to chop up some shallots because we're going to make some um, sauce out of the pan drippings of the chicken at the end of this to go over our chicken florentine. It'll be so delicious, seriously. And you know, my friend James, James, are you watching? I hope so. This is how you cook a chicken breast, and so. You have friends that don't know how to cook I, chicken breast? I, well, I, I'm surprised you didn't say you have friends. I, I, no that was you. shocking, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, <we> <laughs> so that's good. And go ahead and okay. dredge that in, and then put them in that hot saute pan there. The dredge so here. A little shallot, a little bit of garlic here, and then once you get those in there, if you will salt and pepper them just to taste Indeed. in there as well. And our good uh, photog Becky, Oops. she brought me in this beautiful produce. She has an I mean, amazing garden every she year. She has a green thumb. I mean, look at this gorgeous spinach. And then when we come back, we're actually going. I'm going to wilt this down, and that's going to be what nice. our chicken Florentine is going to go on. And it is truly, I mean. Mm. You so know what happened here? So I amazing. pounded them so thin that they're falling apart. Is that well, bad? I think that's good. Dredge into the Dredge pan. Dredge into the pan. <laughs> All right, coming up next on 2 News at 4 o'clock, right after the break, Mitt Romney hits the campaign trail. Who he's stumping for and why he calls this particular race so important. And VA Secretary Eric Shinseki calls it quits. What President Obama says about Shinseki's resignation and who will now oversee the troubled agency. You're watching Utah's number one news channel. This is 2 News at 4. We don't have time for distractions. We need to fix the problem. President Obama announces the resignation of VA Secretary Eric Shinseki. Welcome back to 2 News at 4.30. Shinseki stepped down in the midst of a scandal that stems from widespread problems at VA hospitals across the country. Craig Boswell has the very latest from Washington. Heidi and Chris, after making public statements, Heidi and Chris, back to you. New charges in connection after the Boston Marathon bombings. Police have arrested 23-year-old Carlazan Monotov. He faces one count of destroying, altering, or falsifying information related to a federal investigation. Officers say he's also charged with making false statements in a federal terrorism investigation. Those bombings last April killed three people and hurt hundreds of others. One of the accused bombers died during the manhunt. The other has pleaded not guilty. 
Donald Sterling is now holding up a $2 billion deal to sell the Clippers to a former Microsoft CEO. Danielle Nottingham has the latest from Los Angeles. Donald Sterling, Danielle Nottingham, CBS 2 News. Mitt Romney's back on the campaign trail. He's making the rounds not for himself, but for a Senate candidate in Iowa. Romney made a speech today in Cedar Rapids on behalf of Republican Jody Ernst. It's been tough times for the middle class. Joni Ernst is going to go to work to help the people of America, the families of America, and that's why she should be your next senator. Welcome. Yeah, Joni Ernst is the front runner in the race, and she has the backing of both Tea Party members and mainstream Republicans. And White House Press Secretary Jay Carney is calling it quits. Carney has served as the president's spokesman for the past few years. No word on what he's going to do next. President Obama says Deputy Secretary Josh Ernest will take over as White House spokesperson. In world news now, India's rape epidemic continues with a brutal attack that left two teen cousins dead. The attack happened in a field near the girls' home. Police say that three brothers assaulted these girls and then hung their bodies from a tree. Officers arrested two of the brothers. They are still looking for the third. Besides the brothers, three police officers have been suspended and another arrested for negligence of duty. Actress Charlize Theron criticized for comments she made about rape. In an interview with Sky News, she compared experiences with invasive media to sexual assault, saying, quote, when you start living in that world, you start feeling raped. Theron later clarified that statement, saying she wants to keep her private life private, especially when it comes to her family. Well, here is a creative, albeit cheap way to score a goal. So a soccer player from Maldives pretends to slip during a penalty kick. Oh, yeah, you see that there. Then quickly pops up and then hammers the ball into the net. So the refs apparently did not see any problems with this kick, so they let the goal stand. By the way, Maldives went on to beat their opponents from Afghanistan by the score of 8-7. to seven. I don't like it. You don't like it? It was oh. quick thinking, though. You probably couldn't pull that off more than once, maybe. It's lame, man. It's you got to get a goal on it. I mean, maybe he really did fall. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's a good move. Like it. He scored. <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of winning, the Scripps National Spelling Bee ended not with one winner, but with two. Yeah, double dose here. They're the Spelling Bee's first co-champion since 1962. Jan Crawford has the S-T-O-R-Y. Ooh. Story. Y-T-H-I. Jan Crawford, CBS News at the National Spelling Bee outside Washington. You know, I don't think I'm alone in this, but I didn't know any of those words. No, I had no idea what they meant. And I don't know why they had to have a tie. I think they should have, like, fought to the death, not the real death, but until yeah. nobody could stand All up anymore for long. days. Yes, if they had I'm to. I'm sure they could have come up with more words. Just pull out a dictionary and go for it. I know, but they were right. talking about the fact that uh, this wasn't really a war against each other, but really no. a war against the dictionary. So I'm glad they wanted the so dictionary. two guys not. beat the dictionary. They should have had selfie. I would have done that one. S-E-L-F-I-E. <laughs> -E. You can spell that. Yes, that's about all, Twitter. though. Thankfully, we have spell check on computers these days. Yeah, we're bad spellers. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> hey, still ahead here on 2 News at 4 o'clock. We won't make you spell anything. It's a blowout bonanza, though. Up next, we're bringing in the pros for tips on how to extend the life of your do. I need this. And in the kitchen, we're going to finish up this pan sauce when I come back, starting with sauteing up those shallots and garlic finished up when I come back. And in western Utah, we've seen partly cloudy skies this afternoon, but in eastern Utah, the clouds have gotten thicker and we're seeing a few hit and miss showers and thunderstorms. We'll give you a little radar tour of the state and let you know what to expect for the weekend. Coming up in the Fresh Air Forecast next. Welcome back. We are talking volume in your hair today and how to make that blowout last. I know this is something I've been trying to work on my entire life and have yet to master. <laughs> so we have Aubrey here from I'm Beautiful Salon to help us with yeah. this. So it really can make all the difference. I know when I go to the salon, let's say when you blow my hair dry, right. I come to work and it's like, oh, your hair looks amazing. When I blow it at home, it looks amazing for like 10 minutes and then it falls flat. So what's the difference that's going on? There are a couple of things that I think all of us tend to make just the little mistakes with volume. Okay. So there are a few things that we can do to make it the volume lasts a little bit longer on our hair. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have the right foundation for it. So you need to be using the right products. So we have a volume line that we carry at the salon. And what's great about our volume line that we carry is that it has a lot of times when they make a volumizing product, they forego using a lot of conditioning agents in it so it doesn't weigh the hair down. But 
and then it can make your hair dry. So um, the line that we have is very, has conditioning agents in it, but they're very lightweight. So you're going to get the moisturizing factors, but still get that, lo that volume with it and have that lightweight feel to it. Cool, so. okay, and the brush can make a huge difference to what you're using very and how you're making that work. Okay. Yes, so round brushes are fantastic for volume. One of the common mistakes that we make is when we're using a round brush, a lot of people will put the round brush in their hair and pull down on the round brush. Yeah, that's what I do. And what we need to do is put the hair in the round brush and either pull out or pull up. Doing these things is gonna get the roots up off of the head and so the, hair, the rest of the hair is gonna fall wherever the roots lead, so. Okay, that's what I've been doing wrong all this time. I guess I should have asked sooner because I feel like when I'm blowing, you're always trying to like pull it down right. and smooth it out. Yeah, so a lot of people, up. I think when we think round brush, we're thinking curl and bend and yeah. getting volume down here. But if we put the volume up at the top, the rest of the hair is going to follow. So another tip too is um, when we're blow drying our hair, like I said, you want to get your roots up off of your head. A okay. lot of people think to flip your head upside down, which is a great way to get volume in your hair. Okay. But a lot of us don't remember to make sure it cools down in that place before you flip your head back over. So that's why you have a cool shot button on your blow dryer or you can just keep your head upside down until your hair cools down because if it's hot and you flip your head back over, while it's hot it's going to sink back down to your head and then you're going to lose all the volume. I that thought that was done. just for when I was sweaty after blowing my hair dry right. so I could keep myself <laughs> it's off. It's good for that too. All right, it's only taking me out how many decades to figure this all out, but we'd have the epiphany. All right, right. thanks Aubrey. Thank you. You can check them out in South Jordan at I'm Beautiful Salon. Right now though, we've got to talk chicken if your tummy's getting hungry towards mm. dinner time. Chicken Florentine. We're going to finish this off.